My name is Dorothea Gordon, and uh, I'm Union Bay Reader of the Week. I feel very honored because I frequent uh, Union Bay uh, very often. And I'd also like to say that I'm a retired high school teacher for foreign languages. And if you listen closely, you can probably hear an accent in my own way of speaking because English is not my mother tongue. Uh, my mother tongue is German. I was brought up in the beautiful uh, state of Bavaria and moved to Canada 43 years ago with my uh, husband. And then uh, now with my second husband, four years ago, we moved to um, Fanny Bay. And I was delighted to find out that there were so many libraries around in Bowser and in Union Bay and then the one in um, Courtney and in Comox. So I was very much gratified because I had been spoiled in Victoria uh, with all the libraries that were within biking distance for me. What was my favorite book as a child? You can imagine I grew up in a different culture, so it probably wasn't Dr. Seuss or uh, C.S. Lewis, but um, there were assorted other popular books for children. Uh, one was called Max und Moritz, and that was about two wicked boys who uh, tortured their neighbors uh, with evil deeds, but eventually got caught and had to pay a heavy price. So that was a moralistic story. And then there was another one called the Struberlise. And she was a girl who was challenged with regard to orderliness and tidiness. And um, also she went through transformation and in the end outshone everybody with her cleanliness and tidiness. And I guess um, those stories stay with you because it's still one of my uh, core values to have a tidy and <laughs> clean house and not end up with uh, like Struberlise. Um, I also, uh, my, my grandmother, my Oma, um, because we didn't have a library, when I was really little, used to tell me uh, Grimm's fairy tales, a new one every, every day, or sometimes the same one over again. And my favorite one was Cinderella, or uh, Sleeping Beauty, or Snow White, because uh, they represented stories of women who um, were feisty, courageous, overcame their challenges, sometimes with uh, the help of some good fairies that um, uh, helped them out, yeah. And um, then, um, yeah, she also, my Oma also had, when I was older, no, uh, romance novels on her night table and so I got into those and found out you know how real uh, people solve their problems and uh, what always fascinated me was the transformation that these heroines had to go through and to this day it's one of the most important points when I pick a book is there something that moves that person on or is it just all blah blah blah. What is a recent book I read? <laughs> Well, I'm a voracious reader and I always have two or three on the go. Um, the ones I like are usually speak to the heart, but I also like a challenge and so I go into mystery. And again, I like feisty women who can uh, solve their own problems. I guess they really resonate with me because I'm one of them. And I'm a bit fussy about the writing style. It doesn't matter how many prizes the book has won or how uh, interesting the action is uh, being described. If the style doesn't resonate with me, I put it aside. That's why I always get four or five books from the library all at the same time. And then one, no, one, no. Oh, here's one. And then I read it. So uh, I have uh, recently discovered um, a writer and she seems to be popular because I'm number 60 on the waiting list out of 83. And that's Ali Griffiths. And she is a writer from the uh, UK. And she has uh, created a heroine by the name of uh, Ruth Galloway. So they called the Ruth Galloway Mysteries. And that lady is academically very um, high. She's a forensic anthropologist dealing with bones that are either 2000 years old or um, newer. And she got herself involved with her boss, who's of course the policeman, the chief of police, and uh, has made a few poor choices. So now she's ended up uh, unwed mother while he's still happy with her. And 
the the writer goes through the um, development of this academic woman. Now she's a mother and she has to go through teething and all the stuff that you have to experience when you have kids. So it resonates, I think, with a lot of women. But at the same time, there is enough mystery in there and um, to keep you hooked. So this one, I'm, I am i don't know, I've read 100 pages and it's starting to move. So I, I write, like to read that mystery stuff. Then... Um, because I have a health-related background, I read uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, and he is into the unified field and into a quantum field and uh, talks about how we can heal our bodies with the right knowledge and right approach. And I must say, I always look at, um, when I'm interested in a book, I see whether I can get it through the library, and then I read it, and if I like it, then I buy it for my own uh, personal library. So this was one I got through the library. I had to wait for six months to get it, but it was during the COVID time. But I hung in there and I thought, yes, that's worth it. I'll buy it. So uh, then the man, the book I read for my soul, when I have soul aches, <laughs> I read Eckhart Tolle. And I'm surprised that when I mention him to other people that they still haven't heard about him. So uh, he is... Um, a man who uh, brings you back to reality and tells you what the basics of life are and how easy it can be that you don't have to suffer so much if you just stay in the now. And then I'm also um, into energy medicine. I'm an alternative practitioner. So there is Donna Eden and her um, book on energy medicine. And she actually has endorsed my book. I wrote to her, I told her about it, they asked for the manuscript, they read it and they said, gave me a wonderful um, endorsement that uh, I have at the book, uh, at the back of my book cover now. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm an avid user of the library, no matter what, um, what I uh, want to read about. What other resources do I use from the library? Well, sometimes I ask uh, for an interlibrary loan because what I want to read about isn't available in our system. Then I also avail myself of a very charming um, man who teaches uh, or helps technically challenge people like me uh, with their computers. And he showed up once a month at uh, Union Bay and Gail told me about him. And so I would make appointments and he very patiently explained to me what I could do. And then I, I can't remember what his name is, Adam or Aaron? You probably know him, but uh, yeah, I miss him. And then I do uh, research for my uh, workshops or some for my book. And I go to the library because everything um, is available there. How do I think my life story reflects the kind of books I'm drawn to? Well, I think I've already sort of mentioned that, that I resonate with uh, feisty women. And um, when I first came to Canada 40 years ago, I was um, introduced to Lucy Montgomery, uh, Montgomery and Anne of Green Gables. And to me, that is just about the feistiest creature <laughs> in literature that I've met. And um, I have a DVD and once a year I watch that just to uplift myself again and say, yes, there may be challenges, but uh, you know, you can get through them. So Lucy Montgomery uh, and her stories. And then there was Jane Austen. I'm a real Jane Austen fan and her uh, Elizabeth Bennett. And um, you know, th those were really exciting books for me to read because I could see myself in, in them and uh, they resonated with me. Um, there, and you know, again, the one I mentioned uh, by the English writer, those are books that I can relate to. I'm by nature a storyteller, and I much prefer books that have uh, a story like content. I don't like to get myself into he said, she said, you know, all these uh, dialogues. I want some action that's being described, and perhaps not so much uh, scenery and um, weather <laughs> reports that some. Um, some authors put in. Um, when I want a mind candy, I reach for Mary Higgins Clark. When I read her first book, uh, one of her books, uh, Cra The Cradle Will Rock, I don't know whether it's in print anymore. I was really, really uh, 
impressed. And uh, so I started reading all her other books. But later on, I found that she had developed this sort of a template. And you could tell, you know, woman in need, a hero comes in, bad person, blah, blah, blah. And they were too predictable. So I don't read that much anymore. And I'm looking actively in the library, always seeing what is this uh, and that. And then when I find a an author who um, speaks to me and um, like uh, Ellie Griffiths and has a wonderful style. Then I see, oh, I hope that she's written more books than just the one I'm reading. And often that, uh, that happens. Um, then because I had been giving workshops and um, courses uh, for the Elder College, uh, I decided that it was because my my own uh, life was so similar to the life of these heroines to uh, listen to the encouragement of my uh, audiences who said you know you should put this in a book you have such interesting stories that you tell us during the workshops or presentations why don't you put them in a book so in november 2019 i sat down and i started and I had had the first sentence of the first chapter in my mind for I don't know how many years. And so I decided to call it When Life Has Other Plans. And the title just came, came to me. When Life Has Other Plans, dot, 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 discover the hidden gifts. Because that's what happened in all these fairy tales and, and these uh, other books that I'm reading. So it uh, speaks to a particular genre of readers. It's in the self-help or in the... Uh, it's a, in, it's an inspirational memoir, that's what I've called it. So I sat down and started writing and the book just poured out of me. And um, it was finished in four months. I uh, had it edited and published uh, myself through Amazon. And uh, it went uh, live March, no, May 24th uh, of last year. So it's been around since then. And uh, I'm mighty proud of it. What does the library mean to me? It's a place where uh, I can get lost, where I can go into all sorts of areas. And the library is a very essential service to me because um, it, it allows me to read and inform myself about just about anything that I want. I uh, like the variety, I like the helpfulness uh, you know, of the staff. And um, there are three, three stores that I cannot stay away from. That's the gardening store, the, um, the fabric store and the library. <laughs> if I, you know, when um, COVID first shut the libraries down, my car was always pulling over to the left when I was going towards Courtney from Fannie Bay to the left to go to the library. Free. And I got so frustrated about it, frustrated that I decided to write a blog. I wrote a blog because I contribute sometimes to um, uh, an online magazine called um, tidechange.org as a blog writer. And uh, I called it my withdrawal symptoms from the library. I was suffering. That was one of the worst. Worst things that happened, the, the Union Bay Choir that I belong to, of course, had to shut down and the library. So uh, yeah, that, that was really um, clear to me just how important the library is to me. And then also um, when my husband, for instance, uh, he's the poet laureate of the Comox Valley. His name is Lawrence J.W. Cooper when he uh, needed exposure, and that was before COVID, the library organized um, a book launch and then another reading. And I remember at the book launch, uh, the, the library ladies came in with a tray or um, full of goodies, cake and tea. And that was far beyond what we expected. It was really, you know, make the person feel special. So I hope once these book launches start again, that I'll be one of the fortunate ones who get to read about my book as well, or read from my book, I should say. How has the library supported me as a writer? Well, just beyond my expectations. When I was first writing the book, uh, I told Gail at the Union Bay about it, and she was very uh, supportive and cheered me on. And then um, I met someone from the library who um, 
can't remember her name. Started with K and R. I think initials are K and R. Uh, and she said, uh, yeah, the, the library would probably be interested in buying two of your copies. So no, first one, and then she said, why don't you get two? And uh, they did. And then once they were in circulation, it, I went to the Union Bay Library one day and there it had just arrived. Gail had put it on the main shelf. So it just stared you in the face. And I was just quite moved how lovely that looked and how she made it so important. Then the next day I had to go in again and pick something else up and the book was gone. It had already been uh, borrowed because it had been you know, put in such a preferential position. And uh, it was hard in a way to you know, make myself so vulnerable, but everybody has uh, supported me in the library uh, as well. And I would encourage um, anyone who wants to read it before they decide to buy it or give it to their friends to um, toward it through the library. So I feel, you know, very um, privileged to have that kind of support. Um, with marketing, that's a whole different story, but I think having the library uh, and being able to say to people, why don't you go and look at the library um, uh, issues and then decide what you want to do has been very helpful. So I hope that in the future, I'll be able to contribute um, to the library as much as they have uh, contributed to me, um, maybe offer some of my wisdom and education in person through library workshops uh, and on dream building or self-empowerment. So um, yeah, that, that is my hope that once things turn around, uh, they can be person to person again, because it's just been so challenging, yet we have overcome and we shall overcome <laughs> again, yeah. So my book is called um, When Life Has Other Plans, dot, 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 Discover the Hidden Gifts. And it's available at um, the Uplifter Shop on uh, Cliff, at um, the Blue Heron in uh, Comox, um, at the library, and then I've got some in um, the Salish Book, uh, the, the Salish Market in Bowser, and um, in Victoria at the indie shops. So my um, email is lifeplans at DTLC, which stands for Doris, Dorothea's Tender Loving Care, dot CA, DTLC dot CA. And um, my, uh, my website is just uh, www.dtlc.ca. Uh, I'm on Facebook under uh, Dorothea L. Gordon and on um, Instagram as well. And the books are also available uh, through me, uh, directly from me in, in Fannie Bay.